Hello friends, what's going on? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and today I have another entry in my practice log for you, where I show you what I'm working on behind the scenes and sort of share with you some snippets and tips and tricks as I'm preparing to make the sort of full song lessons that you might know me for, okay? So in this lesson today, I'm going to talk about two things. One is double drop detuning, which is something I have never explored before today. And also, I'm going to talk about The Chain by Fleetwood Mac, okay? This is a song that actually, last week, I saw a fantastic video on this great YouTube channel called Polyphonic. This guy does great deep dives into individual songs or artists or genres of music or music history. He is uh, fantastically researched and wonderfully skilled with his sort of graphical production of all these things. So check out this YouTube channel, Polyphonic. It's probably my favorite channel of the last year or so. He did a video on the chain. I watched it last week. I was fascinated. And then just today or yesterday, I got a request from my newest YouTube video for a guitar lesson for the chain. And I thought, hey, let me check it out, right? So I've been playing it for the past hour here and there and uh, sort of worked out a bunch of cool little riffs and tricks that you can sort of take away and just practice on your own, even if you have no interest in learning this full song. So uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do a lesson for this song yet. If you want to see one, let me know. But in the meantime, let me show you the sort of first steps I took into starting to learn this song. And then from there, you can sort of follow me on the journey and you can sort of go off on your own if you want, go your own way, so to speak. Uh -huh. And from there, you can take the things I'm going to show you and put them in your bag of tricks, okay? So first up, we're going to go down to double drop D tuning. I'm going to explain how. So what's going on with double drop D is basically we have these two E strings when we're in standard tuning, okay? Standard tuning, E major chord, right? These are our E strings. We want to tune both of these strings down to a D, okay? So how we're going to do that is if you have a tuner, you can just basically use a tuner tune these down to D and you're fine. Without a tuner, what you can do is use your fourth string as a reference. Okay, we're gonna tune this low E string down so it's an octave lower than that. Wait till they sort of sound like, you know, in good resonance or whatever. That sounds pretty good. And then let's do this last, this upper one. Doesn't sound really good, does it? Okay. It's the high E string and then the low E string. So now if I do that chord, it's a good test to make sure it works. Okay, so I'm in double drop D tuning now. Now, from there, what do we do? First up, if you want to play along with Fleetwood Mac's version of this song, you'll need a capo on the second fret. I'm not going to do a capo today because if you don't have one, I don't want to sort of uh, make you out of luck for this lesson. And I don't think it's really necessary. So basically, first up, we're in double drop D. The first thing we want to know is a D major chord is played like this. Okay, now normally this would be thought of as a D sus2 if you're playing in standard tuning, right? It's like a normal D chord, but you're lifting up your middle finger. Okay, so that's a D major chord. Now, what this song does is we sort of have these two chord shapes we need to know. The first one is this. And the second one is this. Okay, they're very similar. And actually it's kind of, uh, their fates are intertwined, so to speak, because this first one, it looks like a D7 chord in the traditional shapes of standard tuning. And the second chord is going to be basically what looks like a D major in standard tuning. But basically, again, because we have this high E string tuned to a D, it's neither a D7 nor a D major. But those are the sort of shapes you might think of when you're learning these. But basically, this first one and the second one, we want to be able to play this note with our pinky. It's actually vital to do so, okay? So practice this shape as your home bass and then add your pinky here get good at being able to sort of take the pinky off and put it back on. That's going to be crucial, okay? So when you have that, here's the goal we're going to work to. One more time. All right, now let me say, when you look up tabs for this song online, or you look up other video lessons people have done, you'll notice that they're not really gonna typically do this droning bass note, okay? What you'll find is they do this. Because if you have the 
drum playing in the background. You don't need to do the droning bass note, but I don't have a drummer next to me and I don't have my sort of iPad or anything handy to make a drum beat. So what I want to do is recreate that pulsing sound with my thumb on the low E string. And it's a good challenge to stay steady, okay? So we're gonna sort of add that to things, but let's get to the sort of treble, the treble notes here. And uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so those are those two phrases we're gonna need to know here. So basically this first phrase, now both these phrases I'll say, you're gonna have your right hand index finger, middle finger, and ring finger on the thinnest three strings, okay? Now, what we wanna do is go to that first shape, all right, and go to that second shape, Get ready to finger pick, because we're going to have some finger picking fun with these shapes right now. So basically what we're going to do is, this first phrase, if we ignore the bass note, will be... Again. All right, that's third string, second string, third string, first string. And then the second phrase will be... Okay, it starts off on third to second string, and then third to second string again. But the difference is, um, we're gonna, on that final note, we're gonna hammer on our pinky with our left hand. So, first phrase, and then second phrase. Okay, so get good at doing that, or get able to do that with just your right hand, you know, those highest strings first, because then we're gonna add in this bass note. And instead of doing the droning bass note out of the gate, let's just do the bass note once per phrase at the beginning. count that it would be one and two and three and four and 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 again that's one and two and three and four and 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 I find that helpful. You can look at this tab here and see what I mean. But from there, what we want to do is add the droning low D bass note. Okay, so those are those two phrases with the bass note going. So I find this is kind of tricky to do at first because you're having to basically have two sort of, you know, sequences going at the same time. You have the bass note and then you have the phrase. And the trick is to start it slow. Okay, so once you get that, the next phrase you can add, and you hear this in the album version, is this. I'll do it again. Tricky part about this one is that final sort of uh, group of notes, you're actually going to do a pinch, where you're playing the bass note, the bass note and the treble note at the same time. In the first two phrases I showed you, you're always either playing one or the other. You're never doing them at the same time, okay? So let me do the first phrase, the second phrase, then I'm going to do the third phrase. I'm going to repeat that a few times, okay? So here we go. First phrase. Second phrase. Third phrase. Third phrase again. All right, so from there, you can sort of have a lot of fun. And if you look at the official tab of the song, you're gonna be doing a lot of those, what I just showed you, you'll be going back and forth a bit. Now, at this point in practicing a song, I'm not really too concerned yet with figuring out exactly the order of how you do the phrases. You do the first phrase, second phrase, the third phrase twice, and then the second phrase and the third phrase again. That's important when you come to a certain point, right? But when you're learning and you're practicing, it's important to play and to have fun and just play with these building blocks. So what I recommend doing, what I've been doing when I'm learning this is basically just get those three phrases down, you know, go as slow as you need to before you can do it, and then just have fun, just play, just 
repeat one over and over again, mix them up, or do different stuff. For example, I'm gonna sort of dance between the different phrases and just play around and add some new little touches that use the same notes we have. For example, watch. So that's just an example. You can have fun, have fun your own way, and just, again, play, play, play. I guarantee that's how the song probably was written, was whoever was in tuning, drop D tuning, they were just playing with these phrases, having fun. And I don't know if this was specifically choreographed as when they recorded it, or if, you know, when it was recorded, maybe they were just improvising, and that's what we all know is those opening eight bars, okay? Don't get too hung up on things early on, though. That's my real point. It's, it's important to have that sense of play even when you're practicing, okay? Couple other things I'll show you here are you can do this to sort of transition back to an, an ending if you want. Now this is like inspired from watching a few lessons of this song, but this is definitely not from the song itself. But basically if we do this. So what's going on there is I'm doing a quick little walk down where, where I start off here, you know, I have my ring finger on the uh, D note. Doing this walk down from middle to index to index, right? And I'm keeping this here the whole time. And then I'm ending on an open A. And then I'm gonna do this. Right? Third, open, third, open, third, open. And then just smack the strings, right? So you can kind of go from those phrases and then use that transition as a walk down to end back at a regular D again. Okay? So let me let me sort of do it one more time here. So there we go, it's some great little fun. And what again, what I did is I used those three phrases from the chain as reference, okay? I played around, I'm sort of not being boxed in by the exact order they appear just yet on the album. I'm adding that droning bass note to sort of give me some sort of rhythmic foundation that I can stay between, right? And then I'm adding that sort of walk down. All right, and you can keep going if you want, okay? So it's all good fun. So I do hope this was helpful for you. And if you do want to hear a full lesson for The Chain by me, let me know. Uh, it's been a fun one so far, and maybe I'll keep going with it. Maybe not. It depends. But uh, your voice will matter. So I hope this entry into the practice log was helpful. And uh, keep on watching if you want to check out some of my other practice log videos, again, where I show you some behind-the-scenes stuff of what I'm working on. But again, this has been David Ponce. And again, remember, lastly, I want you to pick up your guitar and play. Have a good one, my friends. Take care, and bye-bye.